Hello, welcome back. Uh, today we've got a good video, we've got some nice things we're gonna do today. First off, this knife, this is the blacksmith knife that I put out this last fall. I'm going to make a new sheath for this. I wanna put it in a sheath that is actually made for the knife and not just a sheath that I could get that worked. So today what I'm gonna do, this knife is par partially done. I'm gonna walk you through the steps that I take when I design and make it a sheath. Are you ready? Okay, here are some of the things that you are going to need to make your sheath. First off, you need your knife, okay? Check, we got that. It's not heat treated yet or sharpened. Uh, that way it's safe for us to work with it and we won't cut our fingers up. I think the next important thing to have is a plan. So what I've done is I've traced the knife, I have a sketch, I have what I wanna do. Here's the front, the back, and the side profile. That lets me know how it's gonna hang and what I'm going to do. Then I need my materials. So, oh, you know what? We need leather, boom. There's leather. This is leather that I get, um, just got this from Hobby Lobby. It's, you know, less than $40 for a roll and you can use their 20% off coupon to get that um, roll and that'll work for basic models like this so uh, for this particular instance what I do is I make the models of my sheaths and the things that I make and then I send them off to a, an Amish guy that makes them for me in mass so uh, I don't need to have super high grain and the most awesome leather in the world for this. I just need something that'll work so that he can take it apart and get the pattern. Um, okay, from there I need something to draw with because I got to transfer this idea to a piece of paper. So this is a thick piece of paper. This is Bristol board. You can get this at an illustration store, an arts craft store. Once again, if you're going to be at Hobby Lobby for the leather, you might as well pick up a piece of Bristol board. So we'll cut our pattern out of that, which means we're going to need scissors. Yep, got those. Once we do that, we're going to need to fit it, make sure it all lines up. Then we will take that. We will transfer it onto the leather. We will cut it out of leather and I will use this knife. This is a knife I just finished. This is a prototype that I'm working on that I might come out with a run of. So we're gonna test it today on the leather. Once we get the leather cut out, we will need to uh, put some, you know, we'll, we'll mark our holes, we'll mark our cut lines, we'll mark our stitching lines, we'll sew it together so we've got needles, we've got glue, I use this Elmer's rubber cement, works really well. It's got a really great hold. This will help hold our piece together while we're stitching. Once we get it stitched up, or I'm sorry, once we get it glued up before we stitch it, we will dye it. You know, it's the new year. You gotta get on that diet. We'll use this wool dauber to apply the, the dye. These work really well. You can get these pretty cheap on Amazon. Uh, little stamps. These are stamps, you know, for decorating the the edges. So I've made this one right here out of an old tap set. Uh, this one's a shader, so we can put some definition along this line. We can put those X's in. Um, I have this drill, and you'll take a look at this tip. I've actually ground it down to a needle-like point. And this is what I will use to put all of the holes in for the stitching. So normally I use a drill press, but today I'm gonna to try to do everything right here. So no drill press needed. Um, in the end, we'll trim up the line of our sheath. And, oh, I might have to grab some sandpaper, but um, that might be the only thing missing from this is sandpaper. But the other thing I use to smooth these out is you can use a polished up antler. This one isn't even all that polished. Or one of my favorites, easy go to, is the Sharpie. You might be using the Sharpie already in this process to draw the lines of your sheath on your Bristol board. And this works as a great spur of the moment burnishing tool. And I will show you that later. And of course, some people use soap, some people use other products, but I'm a surfer, so I use Mrs. Palmer's. This is a surf wax that I rub into all of the edges of 
my sheath to help waterproof and smooth those out. Parchment paper, that's for the process of when we're putting our dye on so we don't ruin our kitchen table or whatever surface we're working on. And underneath the sketchboard, I have a cutting mat. The pliers, I haven't mentioned those yet. Sometimes the needles are hard to get through, so I actually will use a pair of pliers to help pull them through. And of course, I have my thread for stitching. And this little tool, this is a burnishing tool. I, I got this in art school for scoring folds. Actually, I think that's what, I don't know what the name of it is. I think it's a burnisher, but uh, this is the small ball sized, and I use this to put lines in the leather work. So I've had this tool for a long time. I love it. It's been in constant use for about 20 years. All right, now that you know all that we need, let's get started. First step, transfer that idea into a pattern. Double checking that that's gonna fit. I try to leave a little extra space when I'm doing these. I'm gonna cut out a pattern, and that's because I want to have excess. This is a 3D piece, and this is a 2D piece of paper, so you end up needing a little bit more. Oh, this is a score. So. What this does is it damages the paper fiber along that line, it weakens it, and it allows me to make a nice easy fold right along that line. Okay, we're going to cut, cut the back part out, and the front part all fits within there. Okay, now we need to make sure that we don't screw it up. So this is the front right here. So I'm gonna label this. Front. And the front has a slightly different design. So when that wraps around, what I want is for this piece to actually connect sort of a graceful swooping effect. We put it in the paper template, roughly where we want it. Put that piece of paper together. Take a look and go, all right, does that, does that look about what we want? Pull that belt down like that. That will go about right there. And I think, I think we should be good. So now we have our template. The next thing we need to do is trace this in leather. Okay, so I got my leather, I have my cutting board, and now I'm going to find a spot on this piece of leather that I want to use. Perhaps we can just use this now. If I put it on like this, the outside of this piece of leather would be the this crappy side. So I want to make sure that I put this the right direction so I flip it on there so that my outside is actually my outside and my inside is my inside.
gets the rough pattern cut out and we can move on to the next step. Okay, so let's just test fit the knife, see if everything's going well. Yeah, that looks like it's gonna be, looks like it's gonna be okay. I may have not made this long enough. We will have to see. This is an area that might need a little bit of water to help do that bend. I can put a little bit of water on there, have some. I'll just take this paper towel, dunk it in my drinking water. doing that I'm gonna put that in see how deep I can go and that works that works pretty well there I'm gonna take a look at it go. okay I like that I like where that fit is and now I can take a I can take a pen or a sharpie or something just mark, mark that line. Because that is going to create our welt, okay? And so this piece that we cut off that was that excess piece, we have that right here and I can line that up. It's already got the general kind of shape of the exterior and the exterior doesn't matter quite as much because we can trim that later and it's it's actually not a bad idea to have a little a little extra it's this inside shape that really matters Good. And see that gives me, I've got just a little bit of excess to work with and that is a good thing. You can trim it down, you can't add more to it later. So one of the things I do want to get right, right off the bat though is this connection right here. That's a little long and with it overlapping like that, that's just not going to look as good. So. I'm going to trim that up to be a little more. There we go. That's good. There's just a little bit of room here. That'll allow that leather to fold over and it'll create a nice seal. I'm gonna show you. I don't go right all the way to that fold. That way the leather can actually wrap around that. Okay? One of the tricks I do so as it gets closer to the point, I like to thin out that welt a little bit just to make it ever so slightly thinner. See? So that that fits a little better. Now you don't want to thin it out too much because you still want it to protect the thread that's going to go through there. But there we go. Nice welt. All right, so now that I've got that welt, sort of placed out. I'm gonna set the knife in and I'm gonna refold this top piece over and make sure that with the welt in, great, that's great. I'm happy with that. Let's just get some dye on this bad boy. I'm 
and that's good as you can see it doesn't take much dye to coat an entire sheet so I'm not going to worry about doing any of the edges at this point because I have yet to wax or um, trim them once they're at their final trim I will go back and do all of the edges so now I just wait for that to dry up and I can come back and do the next step.